Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm in Tesco's car park in Jarge Cross today. And in today's video, we're gonna look at the history of Jarge Cross. We're gonna start with the most modern history and we're gonna work back. So probably the most modern building in Jarge Cross, it's not that exciting, but it's that block of flats. Um, it's just been finished and it's, it replaced the 1960s office block. But here, Tesco's car park has a rather interesting story because where I am now, or probably about where the road between the spaces is, directly down there is the Chiltern Main Line and approximately somewhere here um, there was a rather serious incident. This used to be a cutting and they wanted to build a Tesco's in Giles Cross but there was nowhere to build it so the idea was they would create a tunnel and fill in the cutting and that's what they've done but they put too much gravel on one side and the tunnel collapsed about about here it was it collapsed um, so the Chiltern main line was blocked for about six weeks and I remember the next day Duke of Gloucester was due to pass through the steam locomotive Duke of Gloucester was due to work a rail tour up this way um, and it meant I couldn't it had to be diverted now I couldn't just jump on my bike and go to Slough and see it like I could hear none of my parents were available to take me to see it so I rang up my granddad and said granddad do you think you could take me to Slough see Duke of Gloucester so he said yeah all right I wouldn't mind going to see that so um, we went to see Duke of Gloucester at Slough here's a picture And then on the way back, he dropped me off here at Jarge Cross and I stood on, there is a road bridge just over there behind the car park and I had a look at the damaged um, tunnel. So here's a picture now. And then I walked home. So the line was blocked for six weeks, but eventually they'd already started constructing the Tesco's supermarket. They had to take it all down. They had to and um, dig up all the gravel again, expose the tunnel, the, the concrete segments of the tunnel, check them, a few of them had to be taken out and replaced and then they kind of pretty much started again and eventually the Tesco's opened with no trouble. What we're going to do now, we'll walk on past the front of the Tesco's and uh, we'll go and I'll show you um, the town centre and the railway station. So I've now come round the front of the Tesco. I'm still standing directly above the Chilton Main Line. This is Packhorse Road, the main shopping street in Jarge Cross. And what I'm gonna do while the lights are red, I'm gonna run across. Um, so there would have been just a simple, you know, road bridge, brick road bridge over the railway, and somewhere the remains of it are in there. So they filled in on that side to make a tunnel. What I'm standing on now is also filled in. If you look over there, you can just see where the tracks emerge from the mouth. And there is Jarge Cross Station. So here we are. Looks rather nice actually with the flowers. Jarge Cross Town Centre. Jarge Cross has a population of about 8,000 people. So, you know, it's not a huge place, but it's um, a very pleasant place now. What we're going to do, I'm going to leave Tesco's behind and we're going to go down here. Station approach. Now, I remember somewhere around here, there used to be some really nice little shops that you had kind of. There was about four or five of them, individual little buildings that were very small, but they lined the edge of, of Station Reproach and they were really, you know, quite cute little shops. Um, as we're going to come down here now, I'm going to be able to show you the mouth of the tunnel. So um, let's just go along here and uh, can you see it? There we go. That is the mouth of the Tesco Value Tunnel. And looking the other way, a train has just pulled into the station. Now, when the tunnel collapsed, it was noticed by a driver in that position there. He had stopped here with his train going to London Marrow, and he suddenly looked into the tunnel. As he approached, the tunnel was clear, glanced away. When he looked back to go, the tunnel was blocked. So he immediately phoned the signalman and said the tunnel's blocked, stop the train coming the other way. And the train coming out of London made an emergency stop just north of Denham Golf Club. So thankfully, no one was injured when the tunnel collapsed. So um, the tunnel is just there. So let's um, wait and see the, the train depart. In the meantime, what I'll tell you about is um, how there used to be four tracks. So that grassy area down there on this side of the up platform, that would have been a track. And where the platform is, that would have been the other track. So there have been four tracks through here. There goes, what is it? 165033 on the way to London. Don't need to tick this one off in my book because I've seen all the 165s quite a long time ago. I think in about 2003, 2004, I saw my last one of these.
So as the train goes off to London, let's go and um, explore a bit more of Gerard's Cross. So before the railway, the railway opened in 1906. It was known as the final link. There was already a railway to High Wycombe, um, which went up from Maidenhead. And then unfortunately they closed the section between Maidenhead and Bourne End. They opened this section here and it opened on the 2nd of April 1906. And in 2006, they ran some steam specials with Leander, the Jubilee, and um, AF45, um, no, 48151, sorry. And um, it was the first mainline steam I ever went on. I'll put some pictures in now. So I'm going to leave the railway station now. I'm going to take you for a walk up this path. And as we go, I'm going to tell you a little bit about George Cross before the railway. So as I said, the railway opened in 1906. George Cross first came to exist in 1859. What they did, they took areas of the parishes of Chalfon St. Peter, Fulmer and Stoke Poges, and they created George Cross, and they named it after the Gerard family, who um, had a manor somewhere in George Cross. If anyone knows exactly where, please do comment and tell me. I mean, I gather it doesn't exist anymore, but it'd be interesting to know exactly where. It was also, the area before that though, was referred to as Gerard's Cross, spelt with a J. On screen now and that was named after a highwayman who would rob people traveling through the area probably on the A40 which is the London's Fishguard Road which we shall come to quite soon. I'm now going to walk on down here, I'm going to go down another footpath and I'm going to take you to one of my favorite places in Jarge Cross. So I'm now coming down this footpath to um, one of my favourite places in Jarrah's Cross. We've already talked a little bit about the railway, so um, let's just have a bit more railway. It's this footbridge here. It's known as the Iron Bridge. I've always enjoyed coming here. Ever since I was a child, I used to come here sometimes when I was little to see mainline steam trains. So I, I can say I've seen a King class locomotive pass through Jarge Cross from that bridge and um, you know that, that's probably how my interest in railways really developed from coming here to this you know what is such a good vantage point the bridge isn't too high you know some modern bridges you can't see over and when you're a child you know you can be down here and you can look nicely through and see the train so this is the Iron Bridge in Jarge Cross over the Chilton Main Line now you can see there's a siding down there that's for turnback trains there is a service from London Marab and the train turns back here but what happened when they built the Tesco tunnel all of the aggregate for filling in the tunnel came by train and what they did the, a goods train top and tail would come into this siding along where those lamps are they actually built a broad gauge railway with a crane so although this was never GWR broad gauge there was actually a broad gauge traveling crane and it used to grab the aggregates out of the wagons and it would put them onto a conveyor belt and the conveyor belt would run all the way along here all along the edge of the car park and up over station approach and then it would go under the road bridge and that was how they filled up the area around the tunnel. I'm going to now take you to um, an earlier part of Jarge Cross. We're going to go and see what Jarge Cross was like before the railway. I'm going to carry on walking down this public footpath. So here we are in a much quieter more peaceful part of Jarge Cross. We've come to the pond. Now this is really what would have been here before the railway. Just over there is the Bull Hotel. 
on the main London to Fishguard Road, now known as the A40. And that's what I said, Jarrett, the highwayman, probably, you know, would have robbed people. But this is really all Jarrett's Cross would have been, just a few houses around a pond. And over there, you can see the woods. That's Jarrett's Cross Commons. So what we're going to do, we're going to go and have a walk through the woods. And we're going to go and find St. James's Church, which um, also predates the railway. So. This is one of the nicest places, I think, in Jarge Cross, this pond. It's um, just really nice and peaceful. And here's some of the nicer, you know, older houses. The houses that are older than the railway, because not many buildings in Jarge Cross are older than the railway. I'm going to now head off into the woods and find another pond. So here we are in the woods of Jarge Cross Common. Really has the feeling like I'm really deep somewhere in the countryside, but we are actually surrounded by urban area all the time. Although St Giles Cross isn't a particularly large town, it's only 8,000, it, um, you know, it's quite a spread out town. And here is the other pond I said about in the woods. On the other side of the pond though is the A40, the London to Fishguard Road. So that runs along there. So no doubt before the railway it had been just like a small road you know with um, horses and carts going along the pond would have been here the horses would have probably stopped here to drink water um, and then it'd have been the ball hotel which would have been like a coaching inn so um yeah here we are the other pond on jarge cross common i'm now going to carry on walking through the woods to show you why it's called jarge cross i've said where the gerards come from I haven't yet told you where the cross comes from so I'm going to carry on through the woods to find that for you. So as I come to the edge of one half of the woods on Jarge Cross Common, this road, the Windsor Road, goes right through the middle of the common. And then there's another, probably about the same size amount of woods on this side. Now have a look here. Got a road sign, Stoke Poggi straight on, Denham that way, Beaconsfield that way. This. What we're coming up to now is the cross of George Cross. It's where two main roads cross. It's, um, so we've got the Windsor Road going that way and the London to Fishguard Road going across. So it's not that exciting now, but it kind of, it's, it's the cross of George Cross. So um, I thought, you know, I, I had to show that to you. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to go back into the woods and so I don't have to walk along by the main road and I'm going to go and find the parish church so I can show you Gerard's Cross is Parish Church. So here we are, this is the cross of Gerard's Cross. There's also an old water pump just there, but I'm going to head back into the woods. So as I continue walking through the woods, looking for the church, I feel now just how deep we are in the woods. Although, like I said, we are surrounded by roads and urban areas. I also found um, Another little pond. It's just so peaceful. Listen to the birds. That's just how what I hear. And it's, you know, it's, it's just really um, nice and peaceful. Occasionally you pass the odd other person. I've seen a couple of mump jack as well. I know what it'd be like if I try and film one. <laughs> one won't appear at the right time. But the early one, I was just going along. And I didn't have the camera on. And a mump jack ran in front of the path. So um, yeah, it's, it's really, really nice, peaceful woodland. But what I'm going to try and find now is St. James's Church. I'm going to find that. And then we're going to go to the very, very oldest um, landmark in Gerard's Cross. So the sound of the birds is still with us, but the sound of the traffic is getting louder and louder. But um, maybe taking you out of the woods. I'm going to show you the St. James's Church of George Cross. It's um, a rather fascinating building as you're about to find out. Here we are. It starts to reveal itself through the trees. You can see the dome. Now this church is a grade two star listed building. It was built in 1856 so it's as old as George Cross itself. Now the interesting thing is it's got a dome and a tower. It's quite Italianate looking 
The story is there were two sisters. One wanted a dome, one wanted a tower. So the easiest thing to do was just to please both of them and give the church a dome and a tower. So here we have St. James's Church, which dome and a tower. I've been inside it once. Um, I've already had a look, it's not open today, unfortunately, but it is beautiful inside. I remember going to um, a carol concert once. I sat on the upstairs gallery and uh, yes, really pleasant inside. So at some point I'll have to try and come back and take some pictures and have a look inside but anyway here's St James's Church now I'm going to head off down that footpath there and that's going to take us through the houses the other side of the Windsor Road to the oldest landmark in Jarrah's Cross so I'm now walking along Windsor Road the footpath I went down took me to just up there so that's looking towards Windsor this way is looking towards Jars Cross. Now, the place we're going to now, like I said, it's the one, the old, or is the oldest landmark of Jars Cross. And we access it down this private road here called Camp Road. It's private, but it's a public footpath. So um, I'm gonna stick to the public footpaths and take you through to an area known as the camp or the Roman camp. Um, it's, that's what people in Jars Cross tend to refer to it as. It's a hill fort. Now, some people did think it was Roman but that's kind of been ruled out no one's really sure it could be Iron Age it could be Bronze Age it could have been built to um, defend us against the Danish so no one really quite knows um, the exact origins but I think from the research that's been done it leans towards suggesting it's a Bronze Age hill fort now around the edge of the camp is this camp road and it's known as like the millionaires road there are so many you know million pound or you know quite a few million pound plus houses down here um so they encircle it but the camp is over there so this is where the footpath goes through here and down there so what i'm going to do we're going to go through and we're going to go and see the um the camp it's really quite a fascinating place so Basically, as you go down there, the houses get bigger and bigger. I'm not exaggerating there. They, they really do get bigger and bigger. They get huge. So um, here we are. So it says Bullstrode Camp, Ancient Hill Fort. So let's go and see it. So there's a few access points. Uh, this one, if you go right through, you um, eventually go down a footpath. You can go around the camp. There's a few bits where people's gardens seem to have extended out onto the earthworks, um, but most of the camp you can explore. And then a footpath, the other side will take you out to by the Bull Hotel, which um, I mentioned earlier on when we were near the first one, the ponds. So it's called the Bullstrode Camp. Well, that way you won't be able to see it, but there is a big house called Bullstrode House. It was owned by Weck International, last I heard they're a Christian organization missionary organization they've sold it there's talk of it becoming a hotel um, not entirely sure what's going on up there but if anyone does know wants to comment and tell me then please do right so we come to here and um, there is the beginning of the earthworks we see so there you can quite nicely see an earthwork on this side as I said, someone's got it in their garden, but it must be quite cool if you live in that house. You can say you've got an Iron Age hill fort in your garden, or a Bronze Age hill fort, or you know, whichever hill fort it is. So as we come out into here, we just come into this massive open space. Look at it, it's huge and vast. So this is the camp. Now, probably the best place to go to see the earthworks. I came for a walk up here the other day and some bits of the earthworks are overgrown so you kind of can't access them and like other bits people have their gardens in. The best areas are down here to where the footpath goes out so you can sort of see people walking all around it and across it and it's a really nice place to come for a walk and it's a bit like how the common where in the woods is really peaceful it's a bit like that it's really peaceful but with um, not so many many trees if we go along here in a minute and i see a path that goes sort of into these oak trees that'll be where we can go and have a look at um the earthworks so i haven't done many henry's adventures videos 
on earthworks. It is something that fascinates me, but I do tend to more focus on looking for actual ruined buildings with masonry. So that there is no masonry here at all. So earlier in the video, I didn't like to call it one of Josh Cross' oldest buildings because it's not really a building. Yes, it's man-made. I'd say it's a landmark. So let's leave the expanse of the camp. Or just before we go, bear in mind, none of these oak trees would have been here and there's no sort of hill beyond there. So they would have been able to have seen for miles and miles that way. I think if you remove those trees now, well, you'd see Bullstrode House over there. You'll probably see the M40, which is about a mile that way. Um, so yeah, it would look quite different. But now let's go and have a look at the actual earthworks. So as you come here, see there's a bit of a, a slope. Let's go up it. Um, and then, yeah, now here we are looking down. Let's go down into it. Um, whether this is an official footpath, I'm not entirely sure. Um, there we go. So this is down in the hill fort, in the rampart of the hill fort. So yeah, it's really um, quite an impressive place and quite an interesting a nice place to end this video. So I really do hope you've enjoyed this little tour of Jarge Cross where I've taken you back in time, so to speak, starting with um, the Tesco's and the saga of the tunnel to the how Giles Cross came to be to the very oldest earthwork and landmark the um, the Bullstrode camp so if you're ever you know out this way why not stop in Giles Cross go for a walk around the common and have a walk into here there is actually a much quicker way of getting into here from the common than I came because I wanted to show St James's Church I kind of went the long way around so you know why not come and visit Giles Cross and um, Thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, subscribe, comment, tell your friends, tell your neighbours about Henry's Adventures and about George Cross. It's a really, really pleasant town. Thank you very much for watching from the, the Bullstro camp. Goodbye.